Dr. Jeremy Weiss, I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today we have Perry Marshall, who's one of the legends of copywriting and direct response marketing. Entrepreneur Magazine says Perry Marshall is the number one author and world's most quoted consultant on Google Advertising. He's helped over 100,000 advertisers, saving them billions of dollars in AdWords. He's one of the world's most expensive and sought after marketing consultants. We have him here. Prior to his consulting career, he helped grow a tech company from 200,000 to 4 million in sales in four years. That firm was sold to a public company. His works include The Ultimate Guide to Google AdWords, 80-20 Sales and Marketing, and many more. Perry, thank you for joining me. Thank you for that introduction. It's great to be on your show again. So since this is Inspired Insider, my question to you is, what do you think about that motivates you when times get tough? Um, so I'll tell you a quick story. Um, summer of 97, I've got, I got a baby girl who's a year and a half old. Um, my wife has quit her job. Um, to, to be a full-time mom. Um, I had gotten laid off from my job in, uh, in engineering and gone into sales. So now I'm doing the whole base plus commission game. And I've worked at this company for a year and a half and it's just been notoriously unsuccessful, right? Like everything that all, like it was, it was like it would almost make this big sale and then it would go away. And then it would almost make this sale and it would go away. I would just keep going like this. And um, and our debt, we had gone from almost out of debt to like, you know, the wider levels. Like, Shin deep. Yeah, oh, yeah. Or up to your nostrils, right? Like, and, um, you know, and, and then um, like I was basically in the slow – process of getting fired from that job and boy you know it's just really bad you know and I'm, I'm desperately questioning myself like like you know why well, I have I, I have listened to all these motivational tapes and I have all this training and I you know and my you know my favorite professor said Perry you're really gonna be somebody someday you know so like what is my problem right you know, and as especially um, people get into self condemnation, like what is the matter with me? You know, and um, well, f I had to, I kind of came to this crisis point, and like uh, you, the the way I may, may put it is, I. I, ha I was forced to stop living in the should be world and start living in the is world. Okay. And part of that was me, instead of trying to do like, oh, I don't know, like trying to imitate somebody else's guitar solo, I had to actually figure out how is it that I play. Like there's certain licks that I just can't pull off, but there are actually these other things that like, and I got it straight. I got it locked into my head that whatever I did next, it had to, it had to match some certain things and whoever hired me had to appreciate certain things that I brought to the table. Okay. I don't want to make this story too long, so I'll just leave it at that. I think that's You can good. make it as long as you want, but what were those things? Well, just really brief. So I'll tell you a, a quick example. Um, so I was an electrical engineer, and I had gone into sales, which, of course, that's like sex change operation, right? <laughs> right. Well, so we had gone to this meeting once, and uh, to the – company that we represented and I you know shook somebody's hand I said hi I'm Perry I'm an electrical engineer and my boss goes Perry is a sales guy and sometimes he just forgets what his job is <laughs> okay well so here's what was going on they wanted a straight up sales guy they wanted a schmoozer they want somebody to go talk to the purchasing agent, negotiate the price, talk about the Bulls game. That is not me. 
That is not how I sell. I am a technical salesperson. I sell on expertise. I sell on problem solving. I sell on by untangling messes. And, and I did not want to be like a typical sales guy. I wanted to have a really good reason to be there. I am here because I can solve your problem. I am not here just because I can tell you nice stories and get a check from you. Like that is so disingenuous to me, This right? Well, what I realized was I needed a job where they wanted an engineer who could sell. And where all that expertise was like, I'm glad you know that. I needed a job where that, that was my USP and that was the USP I needed. And then like, then if I'm selling the other guy and he only knows how to tell stories, it'll be like, send that guy out the door, get rid of him as fast as possible and bring Perry in here because he knows how to solve our problem. Well, I found that kind of a job and, and you know, I'm oversimplifying it, but that's essentially that, that was, that was the issue. And when I stopped trying to fight, like, you know, who I was and, you know, what my gifts are and what I'm really put here to do, like everything just got so much better and so much easier. And, you know, most of my 20s, I was fighting my nature. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't really regret that because I developed a lot of skills and I pushed my comfort zones like way beyond what would be normal. And I think we have to do that. But but I, I want to, I want to like frame this um, so I get this very good friend, his name is Joshua Russell, and he is a film director and a screenwriter, and he teaches film at DePaul University. And Josh and I have these deep conversations about films and storytelling, okay? And especially because I'm a writer, so I really appreciate what he does, right? Um, and when I watch a movie... I watch a movie as a writer, right? So yes, I can be totally entertained, I can be totally in the story, but there's this other side of my brain that's going, oh, that's a really cool thing they You're did. breaking it down. Right, right? And, 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 and Joshua, Joshua has this theory, and I'm, I'm not gonna totally do it just, but, but sort of like this. He's like, every story has a reluctant hero, and I think a lot of us might have heard this language before, and he goes, the reluctant hero is actually a technician. He has a special skill, or he has this, you know, he has this thing, like Frodo in Lord of the Rings, it's the innocence of hobbits that, you know, keeps him from going over the edge with a ring, or, you know, with with Luke Skywalker, he's got his lightsaber and, you know, and the force and, you know, but like whoever the character is, they've, they've got the skill. And what, what happens in every story is the characters, his talent, his skill, his gift, whatever it is, it takes him way out on a ledge and then it gets him in trouble. And he has a massive, total despair failure. And he gets completely to the end of himself. Okay? And then the turning point of the story is always, and then he, in some way, shape, or form, free, free, freely receives some some gift that shows up unexpected, mm -hmm. which somehow heals him, but mm -hmm. he has to like wrestle with it, come to terms with it. And then like, then the river flows and then everything happens and then everything, and then he wins the kingdom and he gets the girl and, you know, and, and everything else. Right. right. You know, almost every movie follows this arc. Well, if you're wide awake instead of sleepwalking, what you come to understand is this is all of our story as long as we're not sleepwalking. This is everybody's story. This is how life goes. Okay? And the reason that we watch movies, yeah, yeah, I know it's Hollywood. I know it's like, you know got this exaggerated polished, yeah. and I know it's got 
helicopters exploding and all these unrealistic things. Like, I get that. We all understand that. But the stories are still true. Yeah, I know it's Hollywood. It's still true. All good stories are true. You see that? Yeah. You know, and so like, like look, you're going to wrestle with stuff. If you don't believe me, go watch a movie. Like, how would you like watching a movie where a kid is born and he has a silver spoon in his mouth and he has a Cadillac and a BMW in a house in a swimming pool and vacations in Monaco and everything is perfect and nothing ever goes wrong? Like, how long would you want to watch that movie? Unless it's you in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, and the funny thing is, is, is actually... Stop and think about it. We could all do some version of that if we really want to, wanted to. It's like, well, look, you know, just get a $40,000 a year job and live in a trailer park and eat bologna sandwiches and don't get in any trouble and just have a really boring life. And then, well... We've all known people like that, and they have a really, really, really boring life, and they don't accomplish anything. And we look at them watching TV, and they're like, that guy is like sleepwalking. So it's like, well, yeah, you can, you can, have, you can have the like really easy life, but you will be sleepwalking. What's the alternative? The alternative is to be in an adventure. That's your choices. There's only two ways to do it. You can sleepwalk or you can have an adventure, but there is no, there, there is no, like, I'm just going to coast along and be wide awake. Um, it, it doesn't exist. Perry, what got you out of that rut? What was your free gift at that time when you were chin deep in, in everything? Um, I got a job offer that matched who I was and I was smart enough to recognize it. Um, and look, it was just, it was, it was $35,000 a year plus commission, and it was a really tiny little um, business, uh, and I was kind of starting from scratch, but it felt right. And, uh, and they, they, they also, they were open to doing these crazy marketing ideas. So one, one of the other things that happened was in the middle of this desperation, I had, I had gone to a Peter Lowe seminar and I had gotten introduced to direct marketing 101 and I'd spent like just about like the last $300 of room I had on my credit card to buy a magnetic marketing kit. And, 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 and I was like, Oh, there is a, a form of marketing exists where I can like, I could use my writing skills and I could use my problem solving skills to make people come to me instead of me chasing them around. And that was just so revolutionary. Like I had always known that I was a good writer. I had no use for it. I didn't have any conception that anybody had any use for it. It just seemed like this, it's like, well, I sure as heck ain't going to like be a writer. Like I'm not that stupid. Right. You know? And so like, it, it just never even occurred to me. And then I find out, Oh, there, there's this thing called a copywriter. Some of them make a lot of money. I'm like, well, I don't, know, maybe I could do that. I started thinking, right. Well, that was a gift. You know? And the funny thing is like the gift was there all along. I just, you know, but if you don't like slam through the pinball machine and run into situations you don't know how to solve, you'll never find out what's inside of you. You 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 just won't know. Yeah. Perry, I appreciate you sharing it. Where should people check out more from you? Uh, just go to perrymarshall.com, and I, I would suggest um, if you just like want intro to to Perry's world, get the book eighty twenty sales and marketing. You can get it on Amazon or on my website, and it'll give it'll give you a little slice of a lot of different things and you'll probably find something in there it'll i think it'll change your life actually yeah. it is a must it is a must for sure 8020 sales and marketing go to perrymarshall.com perry is always a pleasure always a pleasure thank you jeremy